Wild Talents by Charles Hoyfort, Chapter 24b. There are hosts of persons who consider themselves up to date or ahead of that, who bandy arguments in the latest scientific lingo and believe anything that they are told to believe of electrons, but would be incapable of extending an idea from electrons to borders, even though they argue that every border is only a composition of electrons, and go right on thinking of affairs in general in old-fashioned materialistic terms. Well, then, in old-fashioned terms, what had I this morning for breakfast? I think. Therefore I had breakfast. If no line of demarcation can be drawn between one's breakfasts and one's thoughts, or between a cereal and a celebration, this is the continuity of the material and the immaterial. If there is no material, as absolutely differentiated from the immaterial, what becomes of any opposition from what may still survive of what is called materialistic science? Science is systematized and formulated knowledge. Then anybody who has systematized and formulated knowledge enough to appear on time at the breakfast table is, to that degree, a scientist. There are scientific dogs. Most of them have a great deal of systematized and formulated knowledge. Cats and rabbits and all those irritating South American rodents that were discovered by crossword puzzle makers are scientists. A magnet scientifically picks out and classifies iron filings from a mass of various materials. Science does not exist as a distinguished entity. Our data have been upon witchcraft in love affairs, in small town malices, and occasional murders of no importance. According to the phantom materialistic science, there is no witchcraft. In a monistic sense, I agree. Witchcraft is so bound up with other natural forces that it cannot be picked out as having independent existence. But, in terms of common illusions, I accept that there is witchcraft, and, just for the sake of seeming to have opposition, which makes for more interest, I pretend that there is science. Stars and planets and ultraviolet radiations from the sun, paleolithic and neolithic interrelationships, and zymotic multiplications, and tetrahedronic equilaterality, and a little coal well girl who kept the firemen busy, and a kid named Rena got a haircut. There was a house in which a pan of soft soap wandered from room to room, a woman alone in a compartment of the railway train, and then maybe she wasn't alone. The disdain of any academic scientist, if among the sensationalists of today there survive an academic scientist, for what I call the data of witchcraft. And now my subject is the witchcraft of science.